three minutes on on the cross and the celebration. Um, there is uh, the cross and Saint, and Saint Constantine the King. There is a great connection between the two. It started from when Constantine father died and Constantine became the king. His father, and whom I don't remember his name, was a pagan person, was not a Christian. But Helena was a Christian. And she raised Constantine in familiarity. He's very close to the cross and very cr close to the Lord and to the apostles and the saints, especially the martyrs. Constantine grew up knowing those things from Helena, from the mother. Um, but the cross then was not really the sign that we have today. The cross in the time of Constantine was something they called the key row. What's the key row? The Latin letters X, that's key. And the row, the R, but it's like a, the R is like a P. So if you see it, it's a P like this, and then an X like this. The Christian used to make this sign. That's the, the first cross they knew. What does it stand for? Um, the key um, it stands for Christos, uh, Rexo Regonarium, which means King, Christ the King. So you have the key row, both the beginning of the name, Christ the King, and also the sign of the cross. And we know the story started by uh, Constantine uh, calling, I don't know the exact, I don't remember the details of it, to unify the Roman Empire. In the east, there were two kings, two emperors. That was Diocletian and Maximianus. They were in the east. In the west was Constantine and inherited from his father. So he uh, wanted to unify the kingdom, so he took his army and went to fight Maximianus. That's the person, that's the king who took on the fight against, against uh, uh, Constantine. And uh, the Diocletian at the time was, his, his main place was Syria, Antioch. This is where Diocletian reigned and under him came Palestine, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, and Africa. That was the Diocletian. The Cleodians came from uh, Antakya, sorry. And Maximianus came from the uh, area of Turkey. And Constantine was on the Gulf. وكان عايز يوحد المملكة ما نعرفش أنا مش فاكر التفاصيل بتاعة الحكاية دي إلا إن هو طلع يحارب ماكسيميانوس ديكليديانس ما كانش في الصورة وإنه كان عايش كان هو اللي سببه أو الجنود بتوعه بيحاربوا المسيحيين فهو طلع في السكة our tradition says the story says he saw a vision he saw a vision in the day time where a sign of the cross appeared in, in heaven and the sign was the Kiro. اللي هي العلامة ال ال X وال الرو اللاتيني اللي هي زي ال P X و P. ال X كانت ال البداية بتاعت اسم خريستوس يعني خريستوس اللي هو المسيح وال R وال رو اللي هي بداية ريكسوم ريجوراريوم وش مي ال 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 الكلمة اللي بتقول يعني ملك ملك الملوك. فكانت ال البداية بتاعت المسيح الملك وهي أيضا علامة الصليب. فشافها في الظهر. وتقال له أو حد تقال له إن دي اللي هتغلب بيها. وده أول علاقة ما بين قسطنطين وإيه؟ والصليب. الحكاية الحكاية مش مرة واحدة هي بس أنا لازم نركبهم مع بعض ونشوف القصة ماشية إزاي. Then Constantine took the sign and put it on all the flags of the army. على ال shields, على ال على ال flags, everything. And as they went into the fight, and actually Maximus was in Rome. At the time, Maximianus was in Rome. So one in Rome, one in Antioch. So Maximianus took his army to fight him, and Constantine army, having this sign on the shields, they said, some of the historian says, there was a lot of Christians in the army of Maximianus. When they saw the sign of the Kiro on the shields of Constantine, 
they left the army of Maximianus and joined the army of Constantine. So Maximianus didn't chance, stand a chance. And they said they, they killed them and drowned them in the Tiber River, in the river of Italy. And Constantine took over the kingdom. And uh, he never forgot his mother, of course, Helena, and nor the sign of the cross by which he became the emperor of the unified Roman Empire. Later on, there were many stories about how the, the cross was discovered. Constantine was not a Christian in the beginning. You know, they say this, and it's really, every, every tradition said it. Constantine was not even Christian when the Council of Nicaea was, or was, or was uh, met. Hatta fa'iyam magma nukya, Constantine al-Amar bin Hoya Ktama, ما كانش لسه اتعمد. طب ما اتعمد امتى؟ ما تعرفوا اتعمد امتى قسطنطين كان كان انسان مسيحي؟ قبل ما يموت. He told he told the bishops, the bishop of Rome and the bishop of Constantinople that he has a lot of dirty work to do. And he doesn't want to. So this is something at the time was very important. This is give you a little bit of an idea how those Christians believed. He said, once I'm baptized, I'm not going to be able to do anything wrong. But I have a, lit, a lot of bloodshed. I have a lot of killing, a lot of things to do. I need to fix things. So I cannot be baptized and go do these things. Let me finish what I need to do and then get baptized so I can get baptized and go to heaven. So they left him. They left him alone. Even, you know, with all his life, he, 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 he was not baptized. But Queen Helena was close to him, very close. One of the stories, he was married to uh, many wives. One of them, his youngest wife, I think, some of the accounts say that. Uh, we, we don't know how good or how bad. Said that at one point after he made Constantinople was busy, was very busy, his oldest son committed a sin with his youngest wife. And he ordered both of them to be put in a, a, a Roman bath and locked in with a lot of uh, heat and, and um, smoke, and they both died. So when Helena heard this, she was very sad. She was struck with you know sadness and said, "My son is perishing." So she sent she sent him and said, "You uh, in Rome, I have no place. You've made this city in hab habitable for me. I cannot live here. I'm going to go in a trip to Jerusalem." to try to ask forgiveness for you. And he said, you pray for me because I need that forgiveness. She said, maybe if I go and look for the cross, and if I find it, it's a sign from God that your repentance and mine are accepted. But if I don't find it, then we have no hope. So she went determined to have the cross because this is not something she wanted to get just for fun. She wanted to get to save her son. So he sent with her a little army, and we know the story, how she went and looked for it. Actually, it took her a year. A year. And as she was going around through the Holy Land, she started building churches. Wherever she goes somewhere, she asks the local Christians, what happened here? They tell her, oh, this is the place where Jesus was born. Let's make a church. She, she builds the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. She goes to another place and says, what's here? And they tell her, this is the mountain of transfiguration. First, she went to Jerusalem looking for the cross. She couldn't find it. There was no way. No way. Nobody could tell her anything. So she had to go through the Holy Land. She's taking a tour. And as she's fasting and praying and offering penance, she didn't do the tour like we do today to enjoy her visit to Israel or take a blessing. She went to the tour as penance. She was doing as repentance on behalf of her son. And uh, she spent a huge amount of money building churches everywhere. And in, 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 um, in many places till today, you say, they say the foundation of this church was made by Queen Helena. And eventually she came back to Jerusalem, still interested in finding the cross. Very sad, very stressed, very hard. Uh, uh, her heart was aching and stricken and she was not really, you know, having any hope. And that, in that place, um, the, uh, the older people said, 
Well, long time ago, the Jews had, um, actually it was not the Jews, it was the Romans. They built a temple to a Roman god in this big hill, which traditionally the Christians say, this is the place where Jesus was crucified. So uh, she was, what she's going to do with this is, uh, the temple was still erected, still good temple. And then she said, maybe we should knock down the temple. But she was thinking about it at night. There was a big storm and a thunder and lightning struck the temple. So she got this as a sign that this is where the cross is buried. So she took off some of the columns and started digging in the place. And she found the woods. What she found most probably is not the whole cross. She found the beams, the cross beams or maybe the standing beams. And then, uh, you know the rest of the story, she didn't know there were like three of them. And then she had to try it, and the, the holy clergy, there was clergy with her. She had bishop, she had priests, she had deacons. They suggested maybe, if that's the real cross, it will cause a miracle. So they found somebody about to die, that need healing, or somebody dead, and they put the crosses in it, and one of them actually raised the dead or healed the person who was about to die. And they knew that this was the right cross. She celebrated that. And on, in honor of this, she made, she completely <laughs> demolished the temple, the Roman temple. And she built that, actually, there were three churches. She built three churches. The church of the Holy Cross, the oldest, that will be celebrated a couple of days from now. And then the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, which is the Church of the, the Tomb. Uh, actually, Constantine, when he heard that, this is a place because it's, it's what, what the Christian told her, and this is true. Where the cross was is also is the tomb, because he said it was the Sabbath. And in the same place where he was crucified, there was a garden, the Gospel says. It's in the same place. So when you go today to, anybody went to the Holy Land? We visited uh, the, the Golgotha is up high in the second floor and the tomb is down and that's exactly what the gospel has described what Constantine had done according to the people that the tour guides they tell you there was a cave where the holy t tomb was Constantine cut the cave the cave is like a, a little dome with the, with the tomb in the belly of it he cut that top took it to Rome or Constantine, I think at the time was, was Rome, and he put it there. But he left the base, and instead of this dome of the cave, he built a big church, the Holy Sepulchre. Um, this is the story of Constantine and the cross. Notice his encounter with the cross is not one time, and his life was saved twice. <laughs> saved twice by the cross. First time when he was fighting, and the second time when he was sinning. Which is a beautiful story, kept for us so that we actually uh, remember that the cross some very powerful companion, not only as a sign, but also as a life. And this will lead us to think about the life of Christ, how the cross was his companion from beginning to end. He was born with the cross. He walked around with the cross. The cross was in his life in many ways. He was not believed. He was misunderstood, and even sometimes he was judged, thought of as a crazy person, even possessed, um, uh, somebody who is going to turn on the people against the leaders, somebody who's going to cause a lot of disturbance, and someone who's going to knock down the temple, someone who's going to destroy the law of Moses. These are the crosses, some of the crosses that Jesus carried all his life. One of the crosses he took on, that he was born out of wedlock. The people said that. That St. Mary was not married when, he, when she was pregnant. The, he carried on this with him. There's a lot of things that Jesus carried from, from day to day. Um, he carried also the cross of blasphemy, um, physical pain, abuse, um, dumping, and the people dumped on him their anger, one of the best things that they can think about. When the Roman soldiers were told he is the king of the Jews, 
that's where they had his sign, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. They abused him especially for this. Why were they abusing Jesus for, the, for being the King of the Jews? Because the Roman soldiers in Judea were hated. The zealots would go out and kill them. So the patriots of, of Israel, they would go out and kill the Roman soldiers doing them their, their people a favor. So when they take the king of the Jews in their hands, the Roman soldiers would do what? They would really get him. And he said, okay, so the king of the Jews, our time to do what? To take revenge. So he was taken um, um, with the guilt of his people. And then, and, and then from the spiritual point of view, he carried our own guilt also, although he was innocent. That's why St. Peter comes and say, by his stripes, you are healed. By the, stri by the stripes of Christ, we are healed. He gets stripes, we get healed. He gets cross, we get resurrection. So um, this is a wonderful feast to remember. Not with sadness, but with joy, because Jesus actually said this. Because of the joy that was before him, he carried his own cross. It was, there was joy in his work, not sadness. So um, we celebrate the cross with this pride. St. Paul said the, cro the cross is our pride. We are proud of the cross. And God forbid that we, we should be proud of anything else. Not of our achievements, not of our service, not of our name, not of our money, not of our family, not of our certificates and licenses, not of our uh, uh, friends, anything else, our nationality, our background. So when people say I'm, a, I'm Egyptian and I'm the children of the Pharaoh, I say those. I am an American, uh, you know, the empire of the current time, I say it was, and they, they say somebody like, like that, if you're not Dutch, you're not much, I say it was. So, what is not those? The cross. That's it. That's the only thing that's not those in my mind. So anything else? So I think also, names, names, and this is something that we, th we should think about. There's no names. God doesn't really see names that is anything significant. Well, look, I'm not correct from UNC, I'm not correct from Harvard. What should we say? Those <laughs> names make no sense before God. Actually, this is something that you think about. Whoever is glorified before people, whatever is high before people and very glorious, and people think about it as big, is what? is an abomination before God, something disgusting. But what is not disgusting? The cross of Christ. That's, his, that's the glory of God. The cross of Christ is the glory of God the Father. The resurrection of Christ is the glory of the Son. And our life as saints and martyrs is the glory of the Holy Spirit. So that's how we live, and this is how we're going to die, and this is how we're going to go to heaven. We ask him to bless us with his cross. To his term is the might and the glory and power forever. Amen. Take two minutes to talk about the feast today. It's an important feast, and we uh, we are uh, excited to celebrate it. We're very blessed by it. the feast of the Holy Cross, and we are blessed by a very tiny piece from the wood of the cross here in this reliquary. And uh, we, at the end of the liturgy, after you take your uh, blessed bread, you can take a blessing from it. Um, what is what is what's happened that we celebrate the cross? I want to just share the story with you. We just heard a little bit of it from the Synexarium. There used to be a king, and his name was Constantine. Constantine was actually not Christian. He was not a Christian. He didn't know Jesus. But in those times, not everybody in the family believed. Was it Christians were just... The Christ just ascended. People didn't know much about him. So, Constantine's mother, her name was Helena. And Helena was a very good Christian. She loved Jesus. She was praying. And she loved to fast and read the Bible. She knows Christ very well. But the father was not a Christian. But they have a child. And his name was Constantine, and he loved his father. He wanted to be a king after his father died, and he was. He became a king. He loved his mother too, but he was not a Christian. 
And the mother was praying for him day and night. Lord, she says, open the heart of my son Constantine to know you, to love you, and to be baptized and be a Christian. But Constantine grew up to learn fencing, fighting with the sword, riding a horse, learning about how to write and read, going to school like you, and then later also learned how to rule the kingdom. He had to go to war. He had to fight. He became a king, and he wanted to bring everyone on earth to be in the empire of his father. But there was another king on the other side who didn't want it. He didn't want to have everybody under one empire. His name was Maximianus. So Constantine took off with his army from the west to go to Rome to fight Maximianus, who was the king, and his army. And Constantine was not sure how he's going to fight this fight. The Maximianus has a very big army. He didn't know what to do. And in the middle of the day, like now, maybe a little later, sun was in the middle of the sky, Constantine saw a cross in the sky. It was very bright. It was brighter than the sun. And he heard the voice says, take this sign. This is what the voice told him. Take this sign and you will win the war. Constantine believed that. He said, this is very miraculous. The sign in the sky and the voice are actually from God. Maybe my mother religion is true. But now I'm going to make that sign of the cross on everything I have. So he had his soldiers go back to the smith and they start carving crosses on their swords, on their spears. They put it, actually painted it on the shields and they have a flag of the cross with them everywhere they went. When he went closer to Rome where he's going to fight and the other army came to him, the other army saw that sign and somehow they got very scared. And somehow some of the people from the, other, from the enemy's army lift the other king and joined the army of Constantine. And that day Constantine won a very big war. And he took over Rome and went and became the king over the two sides of the Roman Empire. And he became the only king for the Roman Empire. <coughs> Later on, Constantine, remember, I owe the cross big thing. The cross made me a king over all the empire. I will honor the cross. And because of this, Constantine actually became a Christian later in his life. And not only that. Listen to me, this is important. At that time, before Constantine became a king, anyone who is a Christian had to hide. Because Christians were persecuted, they were tortured. Nobody wanted any Christian around. So they were actually going killing them. So what do you think the, the, the sign of the cross did to the Christians? So he was converted and now he allowed Christians to be in churches and to worship and to have... Their, their life as a Christians and to be called Christians and nobody would touch them. He actually ordered all the churches to be open and nobody to hide. What do you think the sign of the cross did to us? Made us free. We, before that we were afraid. Freed us from fear. If Constantine didn't see that sign of the cross, today you and I cannot be meeting in this church. We're going to be hiding somewhere. So that sign of the cross saved the Christians. Not just Constantine in his war. Just you, God used Constantine as a king to make the Christians not afraid. Later on, when he was a king and his kingdom, he moved his kingdom, the capital, from Rome. He made it into Constantinople because his name is Constantine. He made a city in his name and he made it, named it Const Constantinople. And it's actually today in Turkey. And this city, in this city, he made a big cathedral, and he asked that the, the cross should be found, the real, not the sign, the real piece of wood that Jesus actually hang on. He wanted to bring it to his city. And he sent his mother, who was very dedicated, to go and find it. And she looked for it and looked and looked for a whole year. She kept going and back and looking everywhere, and eventually they found it. 
So he took a very big piece of it into uh, Rome or Constantinople, and the rest of it he left. And see, see, Queen Helena built a special church for the cross. They call it the Church of the Holy Cross in Jerusalem today. If you go visit Jerusalem, you will see this very beautiful chapel for the Holy Cross with it, two other chapels, two other churches. A higher church, which is the Church of Golgotha, the Church of the Holy uh, Golgotha, the place where Jesus was crucified, you know Golgotha from the song. That's the place. It's a higher hell. And then the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which is the Church of the Tomb. And then in between, there's a little church that's called the Church of the Holy Cross, made by Queen Helena. Beautiful places. God willing, one day you might go and see it. But it, it shows how much the cross, we owe the cross. So if you want, and we all should have that, don't, we, we did, actually there are three stories, at least two of them today about this priest. His name is Castor. He's an older priest. He was 100 years old when they cut his head. We offered him poison, and he, he drank it, didn't touch him. Why? Because he made the sign of the cross on it. And also another girl, we didn't read her story, her name is Theognasta. She was taken as a slave to another country, and she healed the son of the king because he was dying with the sign of the cross. So the sign of the cross is very powerful. It saved us as Christians when Jesus was on the cross. It saved us again in the time of Constantine because we were persecuted. And it's saving everybody who comes and, and use it. So when you eat, what should you do? The sign of the cross. When I start my day, what should I do? The sign of the cross. Make a sign of the cross. When I ride in the car, before I go on trips with my parents or alone, I make the sign of the cross. Sign of the cross is a saving sign. It saves us. That's why St. Paul says, I have no pride. I'm not proud of anything. I'm not proud of my race. I'm not proud of my family. I'm not proud of my money or my knowledge. The only thing I'm proud of is the cross. That's what he is proud of. And we should do the same. Anytime, starting your day, starting a trip, eating a, a bite, uh, going to play, make a sign of the cross. It's a very, very beautiful thing to do constantly. Can we keep the comments and questions after? Because we're a little bit late. Can we do that? Thank you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God.